Talk Radio 702. SMS Really Clappy. On 3702. Professor Manikapuru Mahoba believes that transformation can be achieved while improving standards and improving equity. Quality and equity are not enemies, he argues. He joins us on the line from KZN, from Durban. He's a vice chancellor and principal at the University of KwaZulu Natal. Good morning to you, Prof. Welcome to the show. Thank you, Reddy, and thank you for our listeners and all the other participants in this program. Thanks indeed. First of all, um, universities are just expected to teach. We want to uh, produce competent graduates. We want to contribute to the development of society as a whole. Why did you undertake this this project of transformation at the university? Well, I think first of all, the whole of uh, of the struggle for the liberation of South Africa has been about the change of, uh, of society in a new society. And higher education institutions are often the drivers and the intellectual input into that kind of process. And government uh, did take a, a view and a policy that uh, transformation of higher education is, is an important component. I think SASCO, the national student body, has always been championing transformation. Society expects us as institutions to be in the new society and to lead the new society in a different ethos within a new constitution. And that's part of the reason we undertook this process to make a contribution from the University of KwaZulu-Natal as an example or a case study for transformation. I spoke in July, Prof, to the outgoing Vice-Chancellor of Professor Lois Ononga about the role universities play in the development of society as a whole. And uh, he did say that universities are still failing in preparing students for life after university. And I'm interested in that theme, not in terms of finding a job for yourself, but understanding the society in which you operate so that the business that you engage in is a direct response to the needs of society. What are your comments on that? Well, uh, Louisa was my was my uh, predecessor at Oxford as a Rhodes Scholar, and we are, we are good buddies. And I think we share the same view that we are still inadequately pre- preparing, I think, students for the new society. But, you know, when you are in South Africa, you know, you live in a society that everybody in the world can envies because we are trying to create a new society from scratch in a different world than most societies have been created. So in this country, we have a huge to do that. But sometimes we forget that we are in South Africa. We tend to think that we can imitate, you know, other places. And that's often not possible, and it makes our lives difficult. So so I do agree that I think context is very important. Historical context is very important. But also the society's dreams. You know, the South African society dreams very differently from other societies. We are very ambitious people. We are very proud people. And we think we are capable people. But sometimes we we also fall into the trap of wanting to imitate other people. And I think that's where the challenge is. And I do believe that we have an opportunity to do so. But I also think that the youth of our country must realize that because the world is so interconnected, Mm -hmm. they must take advantage of this opportunity to actually realize that they have nowhere to hide but to compete with their peers now and into the future. And the opportunities are there in South Africa. What have you found or discovered, Prof, with your implementation of quality and equity? Because you argue that quality and equity are not enemies. And as a a young black professional, it used to, and I say used to because I've grown up now, it doesn't bother me anymore, it used to get quite annoying when people would send SMS and emails and say, ah, you are an affirmative action appointee. And I'm proud of that if I am. But the, obviously the meaning behind that was that the only reason you've got that job is because you are a woman and you're black and nothing else. But you are saying transformation can be achieved while improving standards and improving equity because the two are not enemies. Tell me more. Yeah, I think, I think basically let me put it this way. You know, about 80 or 90 percent of South Africa's population is Africans. And there is a lot of African children that are talented there. They need somebody to believe in them. They need somebody to pick them up and actually support them. That's all that they need. In fact, more children, myself included, 
I'm a product of people who believed in me, who uh, invested in me, and who keep on encouraging me. Mm-hmm. And we often don't do that for many African children in this country. I think that's the first thing that I want to say. Lots of talent, lots of potential, and African people will do it all the time. Secondly, I think the unique situation of uh, the University of Kwasi Natal, it's a very simple one. We matched two institutions on the 1st of, um, of uh, January 2004. And what, what that gave us was an opportunity to change policy fundamentally in a new world, in a new South Africa, in a new constitutional democracy. Now, you can imagine institutions that did not match, uh, they all carried policies of the past, and it's very difficult to change, you know, entrenched policies. So we had the opportunity to change, especially around achievement, performance, retirement, uh, Senate norm for productivity, all these policies who could work them from first principles and make them to drive the, the transformation that we want uh, as an opportunity. Mm-hmm. Second, I think we received a lot of support, I think, from government to change the infrastructure of the university. We were able to build, we were able to build new facilities, new laboratories, and so forth, to give excitement, I think, to the kids that come to UK then. So the combination of the measure and the opportunity to change policies. In fact, we changed over 60 policies mm-hmm. in the university, and we changed them from first principles to create the policies that allowed us to be able to change, uh, particularly, as I say, in relation to research productivity, research supervision, a criteria for retirement, and criteria for promotions, and so forth, so that they were marked on, I think, the, the challenges that we were facing in relation to transformation. Mm-hmm. And from there on, we were able to monitor almost uh, on an annual basis uh, as to what was happening as time was going on. And it just happens that this happens to be our 10th year, mm-hmm. and it was also just an opportunity to take stock and say, what have we been able to do in the last 10 years? And I think those are the sort of the data that has appeared in the public domain for people to see what has been achieved. I am chatting to Professor Mali Khaburu Mahoba, who is the Vice Chancellor and Principal at the University of KwaZulu Natal. Our lines are open for you, and we're carrying on with this conversation right after this break. Welcome, welcome to UKZN University for the launching of the Transformation Charter. 